Hello friends, in this video Scooter and I are going to look at this Yamaha Natural Sound CD player model CDC 585. I did a short video on this earlier where I tried it out. In this video we're going to look at the features real quickly and then pop the lid and see what's going on inside. One thing I noticed on this in the other video was that the door seems to work correctly on this which is kind of a known problem of some of these vintage Yamaha players so maybe this one is past the uh, door problem who knows let's try that out real quick and show you open so this is uh, the 5 CD player as the name suggests 5 slots I paid $10 for this Let's look at the features that it has. Display 1 through 5, disc 1 through 5, forward, reverse, play, exchange, play, pause, stop, and disc power. So this is all pretty standard. It doesn't have a headphone jack like some of them do. This has uh, analog and digital outputs on the back, which we'll show you as part of the next uh, section. This has a lot of white powdery dust inside, almost like sheetrock dust if you've ever done sheetrock. Looks like it's kind of adhered, we'll work on that later. Here's my free YouTube music. So I can demo without getting beat up by the YouTube copyright cops who are always too vigilant. We'll get it running here again. Listening to something real quick. Okay, works as it did last time. <laughs> so, let's see, go to the next track. Pause. As I found last time, uh, the sound of this is good. Um, right now I'm working through the optical uh, interface, so that really means that the sound is driven by the uh, this Marantz AV receiver that I'm using together with it at the moment. Did a separate review on that if you want to look for that. So next we'll pop the lid and see what's inside. This uh, has pretty standard arrangement for this type of equipment. Two large screws on each side, three small ones on the back, and a lip here. So we'll take the lid off. Let's see what we've got. Now in comparison to a Sony player that I recently did a similar procedure on, it had the CD player unit kind of in this back corner whereas here we've got the back center this seems to be uh, kind of more solidly made for whatever that's worth let's do the so they always do this seeking behavior at first to figure out what discs you've got and they kind of play the first disc they don't typically remember what discs are in the player so uh, that's what we're up against here. Now getting this open we can see more of what's going on. Here's the power supply transformer, power supply board, some conditioning circuits. This is the uh, power input here. Main switch on the front on this little board that's pretty standard. Um, gears, I only see one belt I don't know what belt it is in these Yamaha players that gets to be a problem but this one either has a good belt or else maybe that isn't the issue uh, this one actually doesn't seem to have any problems so maybe the belt just hasn't worn out let's do a quick survey of everything else we always have a front panel interface board here ribbon cables this is the main uh, audio board as well as power supply conditioning back here we've got the audio interface which is this vertical stand-up board um, with this red connector is the left and right audio so let's say the audio driver circuitry is right here we've got power supplies conditioning and uh, there's some sort of control processor here somewhere uh, I don't see that on this board directly. It could be on the main board here uh, on the front panel. Could be part of the CD unit. I'm not sure. 
So let's see if our suspicious belt turns while I bring this back in. Okay, so maybe Yamaha figured out that they have a belt problem. At some point this is uh, newer than one I bought in the early 90s that definitely has that problem. Let's go ahead and play this one. You can see it in action. So we do seeking behavior again. Okay, so we find our disc right away and start playing it. You can see that it lifted it out of the tray just a fraction of an inch, maybe a eighth of an inch. Now we should be ready to play. We're kind of all queued up. Let's pause. So during pause, the disc keeps spinning, ready to go instantly, basically. That's what I'm seeing when I push the button. If I do stop, it would obviously stop spinning. Another, we can continue playing again. And then, let's do the disc exchange. So that rotated it to this spot. Just for fun, let's put it in a different spot and watch it seek for that. So it looked for the one that it thought was in one. Now it's saying, since I happen to know this is in three, let's push the three button and see what happens. So that was good. We went to three like we were supposed to. Well, I took the uh, price tag off of the front so we can see the display a little better. It's got all of these little indicators here of some kind that uh, maybe tell you how many tracks are on your CD. I'm not sure. So let's use the play exchange feature to keep playing while the tray comes out. So you can see the design of that. We have these slots which allows the CD to keep running which is raised up slightly. But looks like this little motor here is what drives the um, some gears and grease drives the tray I think or it might be a separate mechanism over here let's see what spins got that one okay let's keep going to it's kind of hard to see but I think I saw this motor running a little bit in a quick gap so it looks like this motor runs the carousel around like that and you're not doing what I told you must be an operator error on my part I'm sure so there appears to be a motor inside this housing with some complicated plastic gearing to run the tray in and out uh, this one appears to be for the carousel. I'm not quite sure. Oh, uh, this one I believe is maybe for lifting the disc up and down. Uh, not too sure, but anyway, this little belt seems to be in good condition. And it also doesn't look like something that gets a whole lot of wear. I figured out what this motor and belt and gears are all about. It's one of those things that seems obvious once you know the answer. So this motor spins, belt, and gears, and rotates this uh, tilted business. There's a little nub that runs in a track up the side of this piece, and basically lifts the whole CD player mechanism up. This top part is, is fixed. The center has a little bit of give to allow it to kind of self-center after the CD gets involved. Um, but by the time this gets raised, it's level, and uh, then of course to release the CD we do the opposite uh, affair, which is basically just turn this motor in the other direction, and it looks like there's a uh, sensor switch in this little blue thing. So that explains how the CD raising mechanism works. I've rotated it around so that we've got the back visible. We've got these 
line outs, um, analog outputs, as well as this uh, optical digital output, which is what I'm using for most of the test. You can see that this was manufactured in May 2004. Uh, so even after whatever 18, 19 years, it's still uh, in very good shape, aside from a lot of scratches on the lid. Well, I just accidentally learned something important. I had it turned off but plugged in and uh, tried to put the lid on and ended up uh, shorting it at this point. Looks like the lid's okay, but this uh, board has got problems. I did a quick test on it and it still seems to work. So let's just go ahead and prove that to ourselves. Okay, so it's working fine. So, lesson learned. Always unplug stuff before you mess with the lids. I'm gonna see if I can clean this off with some uh, solvent of some kind, with it unplugged, of course. So I'm gonna squirt a little tuner cleaner I have. This is ancient stuff, but it's similar to deoxant that's available nowadays. Looks like that black stuff isn't going to come off of there, but likewise, I don't think any real damage was done. It's just cosmetic, and since it's internal to the unit, uh, you know, we sh evidently shorted this capacitor here, so uh, that's not good, but, you know, I could actually test the capacitor in isolation. Let's do that. I did some quick tests on this capacitor with a uh, multimeter showed 12 megs of resistance uh, to begin with until it began to charge. Also this capacitor is connected in series with the power line so if it was open the player wouldn't work at all and if it was shorted I wouldn't see that 12 meg uh, resistance at first. So we can reasonably assume that no real damage occurred aside from this cosmetic effect here. I also tried some WD-40 to clean this, which may not be the greatest in the world, but uh, it didn't seem to do much better than the tuner cleaner. This view gives us a couple of insights into how this is manufactured. You can see that this power cord just slips in from the side with the back taken off, and then uh, with the back on you can't get it out again. You can see that the front panel here is a sort of a whole assembly that slips on top of this and we put in a few screws and the cable on the other side. Under here I can see the uh, more of the power supply board. This might be a fuse here, this blue piece. We've got some sort of choke or dual choke or transformer there. And probably on the other side of this that isn't visible is our full wave bridge rectifier that we're going to have to have in here somewhere. So that wraps up our video on this Yamaha Natural Sound Compact Disc Player, CDC 585. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye.